guy it is reading wrap up time so first of all happy new year happy 2022 i'm not gonna say the same thing i said last year even though i remember what i said last year i'm very tempted but i'm not gonna do that to you <laughs> so uh, yeah it's reading wrap up time so i'm gonna talk about what i read in december and talk about what i'm planning to read in january so last month I had a goal to read five books because I wanted to read 75 books total for the year 2021 and my reading goal was 53 books but I was like why not shoot for another number if I can. <laughs> and I picked kind of easier books to read um, because I was just feeling a little ragged by a few books that I've read um between October and November so I'm happy to say that not only did I read five books I read six books but I'm feeling revitalized and I'm feeling excited about reading because I had a really good reading month so let's get started I have my notes so the first book I read was A Christmas Carol by Charles Dickens I listened to the audiobook I had this out because the story is in here and I read some of the story in here and then I also read um some Christmas poems for Christmas but anyway but I'll put the picture of the audiobook here and this was five stars this is fantastic I love this it was so cozy and Christmassy and it actually motivated me to put up some Christmas decorations and I was kind of hoping it would kind of lift my spirits not enough that I wanted to be around people on Christmas but enough that I was happy on Christmas <laughs> and it actually did that when I was super surprised <laughs> anyway it is it really reminded me of the Muffet's Christmas Carol it really warmed my cold grinchy heart and it made me really happy so yeah this is amazing you either know what this is about or you don't I'm not going to explain it okay but it also gives me a newfound appreciation for the adaptation that the Muffet's Christmas Carol did because it was very similar to the original material just like they left out a few things so it was really nice to get like the entire story and this ended up being my favorite read of the month because anything that gets my heart to feel lighter is amazing also this book is really pretty just what just look at it so the next book I read was a poetry book and that was The Lost Spells and this is by Robert McFarlane and Jackie Morris and yeah, this is 50% art. Might be like 60% art. Look at that. Gorgeous watercolors. And there are different lines of verse about different animals and plants and trees and stuff. And I thought it was, I it was good. It was very cozy. I didn't get all of the poems. Maybe I would if I was more familiar with the animal. But I actually did feel like I learned something about a few animals and also some trees and the flowers. And there were definitely like a few poems that I just thought were absolute gems. And I was like, wow, that's so deep and insightful. <laughs> and I just absolutely love them. So overall, I gave this four stars. And that was beautiful. And... It was very relaxing, which is what I wanted it to be and what I needed. Yeah. And then and next I read Beneath the Moon. This is Fairy Tales, Myths, and Divine Stories from Around the World by Yoshi Yoshitani. And this is exactly as it sounds. It is an anthology and every single page we have this beautiful artwork and then we have a summary of the story. And I gave this five stars, and that was beautiful. It was lovely. Um, there were some things I've never heard before, some things I have heard before, and some things I really wanted to read. I was really interested in seeing what the story was about. So, for example, turned out I marked some of my favorites with these blue tags. You can see a few of them here. But, yeah, I marked all my favorites. And I really like the way she summarized the Snow Queen. But yeah, this was, this was, this was great. I love fairy tales. And I thought she did a really good job 
summarizing the sum there were a few stories that are like kind of complicated so I thought she did a really good job of summarizing them in one page without leaving anything like major out so it was a really good adaptation and yeah it was just beautiful to look at as well I had a really fun time with some of these because this is just one example but you see how long these names are there was there was one name um I don't remember what story it was that was like several syllables long and so that was part of the fun of reading this book is seeing the names and then deciding if I was going to try to pronounce them if I was just going to look at them because and sometimes I would just have to shorten it but this was really fun and I loved it yeah so the fourth book I've read was this one this is um, Disney's animated classics, Tim Burton's The Nightmare Before Christmas. This is a, uh, I guess, novelization, kind of shorter, shortened adaptation of the movie. Um, also, I gave this five stars. It was exactly what I wanted it to be. It was just like the movie. It had the nice movie vibes. They covered all the main things. And they included, um, like, artwork and the pictures of puppets that they used in the making of this movie. If you don't know, this is one of, my, one of my favorite holiday movies. So this is some of the sketches that they included. And this is a picture of some of the puppets. So this is Jack Skellington, obviously. And it's just amazing how much work went into this project, you know? So that was also really nice to see as I went through the story. And I kind of had the urge to sing a couple of times. But yeah, this was great. I read this Christmas Eve and it was perfect Christmas for me. This is really good. It was like watching the movie, but not, it was like somebody telling me what the movie is about. It was really, it was good. I'm happy with this. If you don't know, I think it was 2020, I read a picture book version of The Nightmare Before Christmas that was just terrible. So it was really nice to have two Nightmare Before Christmas books that I read this year and they were both so lovely. And then the fifth book that I read was The Wit and Wisdom of Bridgerton, Lady Whistle Down's Official Guide by Julia Quinn. And uh, this wasn't what I was expected. Um, I guess I thought the whole book was going to be Lady Whistledown papers. But these are the official Lady Whistledown entries. And then she had new entries that she wrote at the beginning of each section. And I thought the whole book was going to be like Lady Whistledown pages. But like maybe small sections of context. And... That's not what it was. It was mostly snippets from other books and a few Lady Whistledown entries. And then like this nice section where she pulls out quotes from family members. Um, He only got two, but other people got more. But people summary, summarizing their like personalities, um, Benedict according to his family. Um, I thought it was really good though. I felt like I got the gist of all the books. And I thought she did a good job of, there's a lot of people, so I thought she did a good job of keeping everybody ordered and organized. And so I felt like I could keep track of all the different people because there are eight siblings and then like all the siblings also get married. So there's also eight other names to keep track of. And there's also Lady Danbury and there's also... um lady bridgerton their mom so we have 13 people total i love lady danbury and this made me love her even more so i gave this four stars i really enjoyed this and this book was absolutely beautiful to look at and she let you know which book um certain quotes were coming from but yeah really like this and I'm looking forward to season two of Bridgerton because I like Anthony. He kind of grew on me over the course of season one because at first I was like, this guy is terrible. But I started finding it hilarious after a while, just how much he sucked at everything. So, yeah, this was, this was nice. I feel like I got to know Kate some too. So I'm really excited to meet Kate in this next season. I'm not going to read the books. <laughs> and the last book that I read 
was The Other Black Girl. This was by Zakia Dahlia Harris. And surprisingly, I just knew going into this book that this is going to be a three star read for me. I gave this four stars. Let me try to summarize kind of this book without any spoilers. <laughs> so this is about this girl, this black girl, and she is an assistant editor, assistant to an editor <laughs> at this publishing house at this big fancy fictional publishing house. And she's been working there for two years and she's really ready to be promoted to an editorial assistant where she would get to like have her own books and everything. And one day this other black girl <laughs> starts working in the office named Hazel and our main character Nella is like so excited, too excited about this other black girl. And it's very obvious from the get go that this other black girl is sketchy as hell. So most of this book is pretty boring. So for the first like 60% of this book, I was interested to keep going because there were like snippets of interesting things happening, but I was also like really bored at the same time. And I was bored because like not much was happening. And so the story was boring, which normally I'm fine with, but Nella, our protagonist was also boring. And so uh, Nella is not the only point of view character. We also get first person accounts from a few other people that's kind of scattered. Anyway, each of these different characters, like Nella's, point of view is in third person and these other characters point of views are in first person and they're all labeled so you know you know whose head you're in when they get started but I think there's three different people there's I don't want to say anybody's name in case it's kind of a spoiler but we have this one woman she has a few um I want to say maybe three or four and then this other woman she also has like three and then this um younger girl who I think is in her mid-20s like our main character she has like four or five anyway so what made the book boring and so I wasn't like motivated to read it all the time I did read some almost every day but I wasn't like motivated to read until we got to like the last 40% because like Nella herself is incredibly boring all she does is go to work and then go home and talk about work and I didn't find her work interesting. I didn't find her interesting. She was very, very obsessed with being black. And I was kind of suspicious by how obsessed she was with her own blackness. But by the time I finished the book, I was kind of like, you know what? This is actually kind of brilliant because, because she was so obsessed with him. And she was like, she was exhausted. Like, she's like, I'm black. I have to work three times as hard as everybody else. And she was working three times harder than everybody else. She was running herself ragged. She was running herself into the ground. She was stressing herself out with the news. And it was just like... <laughs> What I found a little annoying in the first half of the book became like this aspect of the book that, yes, I think it's kind of brilliant by the time I finish because it just makes so much sense. And then like Hazel, Hazel was hilarious. She was like, oh my gosh, she had like at least three different personalities over the course of the book where she's like super down, like I'm your friend, a girlfriend, sis, whatever. And then she's like um, super like <laughs> throwing Nella under the bus. <laughs> she's just like the perfect black girl. And Nella is so jealous of her and it starts to drive her crazy and make her want to work even harder than she's already working. And then everything like kind of, the last 40% of the book actually goes by pretty quickly. Like you, they had the date at the beginning of most chapters, but I had to keep going back to the previous chapter to see how many days it had been. Because like I didn't remember what the previous date was. <laughs> so... Everything kind of like comes to a head in the very last chapter and Hazel and Nella kind of have this very weird conversation in a bathroom and then we have this epilogue. <laughs> and I ended up giving this book four stars because I was like, this was hilarious. It was hilarious. It was so weird. It was weird. So I categorize this as horror because I don't know how else to categorize it. Like it's gotten compared to be like the Dever Wears Prada but in publishing, you know, meets Get Out. 
And I kind of agree with some of the reviews that I read. It's definitely more gets out than the Devil Wears Prada, but I do see like where they were coming from with the Devil Wears Prada thing. But anyway, it's very, it's very weird. I didn't know what was going on. Like I didn't call it early is what I'm saying. I called it um, around the time they started, it started, they started to reveal more information and they started talking about a very specific thing. And then I was like, okay, so it has something to do with this. But I still didn't know exactly what they were doing until they told us. So that was good because I'm not disappointed when I'm right, but it's always fun when I'm not, you know? And so, yeah, I would say that this is a, this is a very weird book. It's a very weird book. It's kind of stupid, but it's also kind of brilliant and hilarious at the same time. The ending definitely lifted the ratings from three stars to four stars because I just thought like the last, you know, 40% of the book was very interesting and I wanted to read it and I was motivated to read it and I got it done pretty quickly after that. And I liked it. I am left feeling like I liked this book. It was, it was strange. <laughs> and I want to talk about it. <laughs> but yeah, that's basically what it's about. It's about Nella. And she works in a publishing house and there's this other black girl and she starts getting competitive and everybody loves Hazel. Like she's, like I said, she's perfect. She gets along with everybody. She always knows exactly what to say. She's so stylish. Her boyfriend's so cute. Her life is so great, you know? <laughs> and now it's just like on a struggle bus hard. And it was, I and ultimately ended up thinking that it was so fun and hilarious and definitely can see where the get out comparison is coming from and i do get the devil wars potter comparison a little bit with you know them being competitive and wanting to fit in and wanting to be at the top and wanting to be the best and everything and kind of compromising like nella at some point starts compromising her values and like everything that's important to her her relationships um for this job <laughs> so i do get it it was fun. I'm surprised. I almost didn't pick this book up. And I'm so glad I did because it was, it just put me in such a good mood because I just thought it was hilarious. The concept of this, this the, the part that's a spoiler, is so hilarious to me. Plus it's just like kind of unique and different. And I just haven't read anything like this before. So if Zakia writes another book, I will definitely look at it because I like me some weird horror and this is definitely weird horror. <laughs> I did film myself playing the TBR game. I tried to film myself picking slips of paper out of a jar and I didn't hit the record button for that section, but <laughs> I will insert footage of me playing the game in case you want to watch it. And then... We'll come back to me now and I'll talk about what's on my TBR for January. Okay, so I thought I would film the TBR game this time in case this is interesting to anyone. So we are starting the new year. So I'm going to start over at Go. I'm also going to change my, what is this thing called? My player from Dumbledore to something else. I got these really cute magnetic bookmarks from Lit Joy Crate. So I'm going to be using this one this year. And so we're gonna put her on go. And I never did use my free spin, so I'm gonna put this back in the pile. All right, so I'm gonna get the board set up. I'm gonna get my cards shuffled and put on the board. And then we'll get started. And in case you haven't seen it, I have again gel free cards and free spins. This is so I can change a book category if I'm just not in the mood for one or something. And so we also have two for the other category. Okay, so I think I'm gonna start off January with 10 books on the TBR. So I already have two, and so I'm going to roll eight times. So I'm going to be using these rainbow dice for the most part and every third spin just to keep things interesting I'm going to use this um, 20 sided die. So spin number one. Seven. 
Okay, so right off the bat, <laughs> we get an intimidating book, which is from this pile. Oh my gosh. I'll think about it. Um, I'm not I'm not gonna worry about it just yet. I think if I roll a double, I get a free spin. I forgot my own rolls. Okay, I just checked. I am right. If I roll a double, um, I can probably change that. But the good thing is I have a limit of one intimidating book per game. So roll number two. <laughs> So we get a four. Okay, so roll number two is a retelling. So number three is nine. So over here in the traditional free parking space, we have power tree. It's been number four. Six. Graphic novel, and I did earn myself a free spinner, get a jail free card. Um, so I have this. You know what? And I am going to use it, so I'm just going to put this back. And I'm going to change spin number one here in a second. So I'm also going to put this back. I'm just not in the mood. Okay. So uh, spin number five. Of snake eyes doubles again so this time i'm gonna get a get out of jail free card and i can keep that until i want to use it oh boy contemporary <laughs> okay roll number six um for the record if i roll a double i can just go ahead and roll again but i'm just going to go with a contemporary book this is 18. Wow, I think that's the highest number I've rolled. Okay, this is a priority read. This is a book that I said I wanted to read this year. Okay, roll well, number seven. Six. A popular book. This is a book that I've heard a lot about personally in the writing circles that I run in. 100% chance that's going to be a YA book. Roll number eight. Nine. Okay, five plus years. This is a book that has been on the TBR for a while. For at this point, I think everything in that jar has been on my TBR for five years as of the end of last year. <laughs> so our bonus spin, we're going to use this dice. And I got a three. And <laughs> another book that's been in the TBR for a while. This is great. So I will get those jars and we'll see what's on my TBR. when I'm filming this it's actually really late and I am not fit to be seen so I'm going to pick out the jars this way see if this works I was going to film me going through my TBR jars but apparently I didn't hit record so it didn't get into that so I'm just going to show you the slips of paper that I picked since I can't really refilm that because I just picked stuff out of a jar <laughs> but for the retelling category I got this and I don't have a poetry jar, so I just picked a poetry book off the shelf. For the graphic novel, I got this. For contemporary, I got this. I'm pretty sure this is magical realism, but it was in the jar, so we're going with it. For priority read, I got this. For a popular book, I got Kingdom of the Wicked. For a book that's been on my TBR for a while, I got this. This is a middle grade mermaid book. And then for my free spin, which was also a book that's been in my TBR forever, I just picked out my ebook jar because I want to make sure I have an ebook um, on every single month. And I got this, which is hilarious. So I will get all these books together and when I'm presentable, because when I'm filming this, it's really late. 
I will talk about all the books in the official TBR section. But anyway, I will see you guys in the main video. Okay, so I have 10 books on my January TBR. I decided to do my TBR page like this. I'm pretty sure this is going to look very, very different every single month. But that is what I did this month. Let's talk about these books. And I'm actually going to talk about the ebook first before I forget about it. Because even when I was making this diagram, I forgot about the ebook. So the ebook I picked out was for the prompt, a book that's been on my TBR for a while. But I was at the last prompt and I hadn't picked an ebook yet. So I decided to pick an ebook for this prompt. And this book has been on my TBR for at least three years. Um, I think I bought it about three years ago. <laughs> So it also kind of fits the prompt and I also get an ebook on my TBR because I want to have an ebook on my TBR, at least one every single one because I want to get through that ebook TBR. And that is The Rose by Tiffany Reese. And I read The Red by Tiffany Reese and it was an uh, erotic fantasy. It was hilarious. So funny. So I was like, oh, that was fun. Let me get The Rose. So I'm pretty sure this is the same thing. Um, I don't quite remember the concept of this book, but I think it's about this girl. And I don't know if she works in the museum or if she's just at the museum. But it has something to do with some kind of vase and some kind of artwork. Um, and I think every time she touches this vase, she gets transported to this fantasy world where she has some kind of weird kinky fantasy sex, I'm assuming, based on what happened in the first book. Now, this is not a series, but this book is kind of in the same vein as The Red. So I'm expecting it to be weird, <laughs> but also fun and probably a little hilarious and ridiculous at the same time. But I didn't have a preference for what each book to read next, which is why I play this game and I have my random TBRs. So that's the first book on my TBR. Not the first book on my TBR, but that's the ebook on my TBR. So next we're getting into the physical books. The graphic novel I picked, and I did land on graphic novel as well, but I also want to have a graphic novel on my TBR every month as well, is Bloodstain. This is by Linda Sajic. She got on my radar because I have a couple graphic novels by her husband. I forgot that quick what this is about. I've not had this that long. I think this is about this woman who works for this mad scientist and I actually heard this first volume is kind of boring, but maybe I'll like it as long as the characters are interesting. I can get through some boring plot stuff. And also this is a graphic novel, so it's not like it's gonna last too long, right? But yes, let's just show you some of this artwork because, oh my gosh, it's so good. So I'm really looking forward to this. I'm expecting it to get bloody at some point. And I think it's like some kind of retelling, but I don't remember. So we'll see what happens when I read this, but I'm excited. The next book on my TBR is the book I'm most excited about. And this is a novella. This is Come For Me With Apples by Catherine M. Valente. I'm pretty sure this is going to either fall into the weird horror category or some kind of very weird literary fiction category. Um, it's giving me Stepford Wives vibes, but I don't know that much about it. <laughs> but I saw this cover and I kind of heard the concept and I was like, that sounds really good. It's very short. It's like 100 and one pages or something but basically what this book is about is about this woman what's her name Sophia and like the blurb online says that her life is perfect that her life is perfect her husband is perfect everything is perfect the neighborhood is perfect and but there's something strange going on and I think that there's like a room she's not allowed to go in yeah, there's a locked basement that she's never allowed to go in. And whenever she asks the neighbors, they can't quite meet her gaze. But everything is perfect, isn't it? It just sounds so weird and so I'm at least I'm very, very excited about this. So, high expectations for this. <laughs> we'll see what happens. So, I landed on the poetry. So, my poetry book that I picked was When the World Didn't End poem poems by Caroline Kaufman and I read what light filters in so I think she's like an Instagram poet but I liked her last poetry book 
So when I saw this one, I just went ahead and picked it up. So finally reading this. It's the kind of poetry that's up my alley, somebody talking about their emotions. And they have a lot of feelings and they're not happy feelings. Okay, so the next book on my TBR, this was in the contemporary jar, which I think I talked about, or maybe I didn't because maybe that's the part that got cut off that I didn't hit record, whatever. Anyway, um, this is The Lights of Sugarberry Co. by Heather Weber. I'm like... 100% sure. <laughs> At least magical realism, if not like light contemporary fantasy. It says it's a charming novel of family love and the healing power of a little like magic. But this was in the contemporary jar. So this is my contemporary pick. <laughs> even though this is not a contemporary book. I'm pretty sure you even have this with my fantasy books. But anyway, I don't remember what this book is about. <laughs> says that she nearly drowned in the lake outside her mom's bed and breakfast. Her mom has a heart attack and then her and her sister um, come together to run to bed and breakfast while their mom recovers. And it says, with a little help from the end's quirky guests, can the sisters come to, come to terms with their strained relationships, accept the past, and rediscover a little like magic? I don't know. Apparently, this sounded interesting to me when I saw it. So let's read this and see what this book is about. And it's not too long. It seems charming and heartwarming, which is, you know, not something I would normally pick up, but I thought it sounded interesting. So here we go. So um, I think this was the other book that I picked for the book that's been on my TBR for a while. So I picked May by Katherine Lasky. This is the second book in her, I guess, mini series of mermaid books. And I read the first one, Hannah, and I loved it. I started reading this one. I got, it looks like 26 pages in. I just zoned out and lost interest, but I'm trying try again. So all I know is this girl is a mermaid. And I think when they turn 15, they have to decide if they're going to stay on land and be human or if they're going to go to the sea and be a mermaid because they can't do both. And so we'll see what choice this girl makes. Probably a different choice than the first girl made. <laughs> but we'll see. And that's all I know about it. And this has definitely been on my TBR for a while. Okay, the next book I picked, I think this was in the retelling jar. Probably <laughs> the 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 lightest, least retelling is book on my shelf. And of course, it's the one I pick. This is The Raven's Tale by Cat Winters. And the blurb says, when young Poe, Edgar Allan Poe, meets his muse, the world will change forevermore. So that's why I picked this up because I thought this was an adult book. And it was YA and I was upset. So I didn't read it. <laughs> <laughs> at the time I picked it up but I still want to read it <laughs> that's why I still have it so I think this is just about young Edgar Allan Poe talking to his muse and I think his muse is like I guess kind of like a spirit or something that he can see and like interact with but it's not really there it's like in his head I think I don't know what to expect I've had this book for a while <laughs> I say that and I'm looking in here and it said the book came out in 2019. Why do I feel like I've had this book for seven years? <laughs> anyway, it's on the TBR now so we're gonna read it. And then the book that I picked out of the popular books jar was Kingdom of the Wicked by Carrie Maniscalco and I've heard a lot about this book which is why it's in that jar and I'm excited. I did read a little bit of this last fall and I'm like wow I'm really not in the mood <laughs> for this. So I'm like, let's try again later. And I may have been burnt out on YA, I don't know, because I'm pretty sure I didn't read any more YA um, after I tried to read this book. But anyway, I've had a break. So let's read this. If you don't know what this is about, this girl has a twin sister and her sister is slaughtered. <laughs> it's basically how it's described. And she summons a demon prince from hell 
to help her track down her sister's killer and get revenge. Sounds really fun. Definitely not something you want to take too seriously. That if memory is serving me correctly from when I was reading it before, because the character um, has the emotional depth of a teaspoon. <laughs> so, so we're not going to take this seriously. Should be really fun. This is the Barnes and Noble edition, just FYI. And then speaking of YA, I picked this book out of the priority reads list. I've been wanting to read this book for a while. My, If you saw the book calls I posted last year, I actually picked up book three from Books A Million because I thought it sounded really interesting. And then I got it home and I was like, this is book three. And But instead of taking that book back, I was like, you know what? I don't wanna read the series. So why don't we just get the other two books? So this is book one. <laughs> I don't remember what this is about. The Last Magician by Lisa Maxwell. All I know is that it sounded really interesting. It was something that I wanted to read. But this bolded part of the blurb says, Stop the Magician, Steal the Book, Save the Future. And it takes place in modern day New York. That's all we need to know. And then the last book on my TBR is The Ballerinas. This is by Rachel Kapelke Dell. My sister wrote an arc of this book and did not like it, but I still think it sounds really interesting. I want to read it. So I picked this up. It's about, I think they're sisters and they were ballerinas when they were younger and now they're adults and they're on the struggle bus. And one of them is married to an ex baller belly dancer. And he got hurt or something, and he's also on the struggle bus. <laughs> and I don't know. It just sounds interesting to me. It says you, on the back, it says you start out perfect and you become something else. I don't know. I guess it's like dark contemporary. So if the Lights of Strickleberry Cove doesn't count as a contemporary book, this definitely does. But apparently somebody has a secret. That can ruin everyone's life. So, we'll see. Anyway, this is on my TBR. But anyway, so these are the physical books on my TBR, plus the rose. And I'm excited. Excited to start reading this stack. And yeah, I'm really happy I had a great end to my 2021 reading. Because... I'm real excited about I'm excited about these books, but I'm gonna be reading this one first. And then we'll just go from there and we'll see what happens. I did follow my TBR for December. Surprisingly, I read every single book that was on my TBR. <laughs> I think that might be the first time in all 2021. The only time in all 2021 that that happened that I read everything on the TBR, but there's only five books on there officially. And I'm excited. So, you know, we may read these books. We may swap them out for something else. I don't know. I just go where the wind blows, you know? But anyway, that is all for this video. And yeah, I will see you guys next week. I think I'm going, I'm going to try to do a video where I rank everything I read in 2021. If for some reason that doesn't work, then I'll just talk about my top seven reads and my bottom like five or seven reads or something and be done with it but I'm going to try to rank everything we'll see if that works okay anyway that's all for this video and I will see you guys next week and yes happy new year happy 2022 and 2022 is the year of the tiger I don't know when that starts but I'll look it up and yeah I will see you guys next time. Bye.